Hello and welcome to Civil Talk. Today we're going to learn about the pen stock. We are very much familiar with the word pen stock. A pen stock is a pipe that conveys the flow from forway or source tank to the turbine. That means it is a closed conduit that conveys the flow to the turbine from forway or source tank. So what is the material that are required to build the source tank or sorry pen stock pen stock are usually made up of steel although other materials are also found to be used in the construction of pen stock that are reinforced concrete GRP which stands for glass reinforced plastic SDPE high density polyethylene are also the materials that might be used in pen stock pen stock are the pressurized water conduits which conveys water to the turbines that i have already stated so now let's get into the topic the picture you are seeing is the pen stock of sindhu pal chok a sunkosi hydroelectric project whose capacity is 10.05 megawatt so now coming to the design consideration of pen stock what are the things to be considered while designing any kinds of pen stock first of all there is owner's requirement owner's requirement includes what are the preferred materials and the design type whether the material is grp or sdpe or steel pen stock pipe what is the plant operation requirement is there any code of conduct or the mandatory rules and regulation of inspection and maintenance provisions and what will be the annual cost of capital investment and cost of power and revenue losses these are the owner's requirement to be considered while designing pen stock pipe and the second one is site specific requirements which includes land ownership right of way limitations we are very much familiar with the word right of way limitations relating relating to excavation quarrying etc so the pen stock alignment should consider these things the site geology hydrology hydrology and soil applicable codes and mandatory requirements so there might be some mandatory requirements to be followed while aligning any kinds of pen stock pipe one should also consider the right of way limitations as well as the land ownership and it should be aligned in such a place that there will not be any there should not be any problem arising uh, arising relating to the excavation and quarrying things so what are the types of installation of pen stock how pen stock are installed what are the types so Number one is exposed pen stock. From the word exposed pen stock, there is no need for for the explanation. But what is exposed pen stock? Pen stock supported as a pier or saddle. Support or pen stock supported in ring girder are example of pen stock. That means whole pen stock can be seen from outside and it is supported at pier or saddle support. Generally, pen stock is supported. by pure or saddle in every 5 meter interval generally it is seen that so what are the advantages and disadvantages of exposed pen stock so coming to the advantages let's talk about the advantages since it is exposed it is very easy while doing inspection and maintenance it is very economical in rocket terrain and large diameter and the stability is ensured 
with anchorage or anchor blocks. So now, what are the disadvantages of exposed pinstock? Since it is exposed, it has a direct exposure to weather effects. Development of longitudinal stress on account of supports and anchorages, thereby necessitating expansion joints. Therefore, expansion joints are provided in exposed pin stock. <laughs> so, we can see here the section of exposed pin stock. The first one represents the pin stock at saddle support, which is the concrete block, and another one is the ring girder support. Now, the second types of penstock installation is steel tunnel liner, which is also known as embedded penstock. These are located in a tunnel and fully encased in concrete or encased in a portion of a dam. That means this embedded penstock is usually adopted in high dam. which is embedded into the body of the dam. <laughs> now, the third one is the buried penstock. Buried means underground. Okay. They can be either partially or fully buried. There is no any mandatory rule that it should be fully buried. It can also be a partially buried penstock pipe. The buried pipes are supported on the soil in a trench at the depth of 1 meter to 1.5 meter and after the placement the trench is backfilled again with the help of soil so here in the picture we can see the figure of cross-section of embedded pens so first this is the dam intake where a pen stock pipe is embedded into the dam body for instance there is also a penstock pipe inside the tunnel which is also known as embedded penstock or we can also call it penstock tunnel and the second picture here demonstrates how the buried penstock looks like you can see it you can pause the video and see the section so now what are the advantages and disadvantages of buried penstock since it is buried, it is very much well protected from the temperature fluctuation. It conserves the natural landscape since it is again backfilled with the soil and it is the protection, it has the protection from landslide storms and man-made violences. Talking about the disadvantages that the buried penstock has, since it is buried, the inspection of faults is very much difficult. There are lots of possibilities of slide in the steep slopes. There is a greater expenses for large diameter pipe in rocky and large boulder mixed soil. So now, let's talk about the another topic stock alignment four way and source tank location the location of four way source tanks should be so chosen to give the minimum penstock lane that means if source tank is placed nearer to the powerhouse there will be automatically the length of penstock is very much minimum Sometimes longer penstock may be economic to avoid the need for headrest to cross an unstable slope. And the second point is practical ground slope. Actually, the ideal ground slope for the penstock alignment is 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 2, that is vertical is to horizontal. This is the practical ground slope, but we can adopt uh, different ratios according to the topography and uh, the economic feasibility of the project. Since the flatter ground, there will be the pencil alignment will be less economic because longer pipe will be required for lower head. As we know, 
lower head produces lower power because power is directly proportional with the head and discharge and a stiff slope minimizes the penstock length but manually laying the penstock pipe will be very difficult in this stiff slope and construction of support piers and saddle support will also be very difficult now coming to the third point minimum number of beds as we know that if there are larger no greater number of beds then there will be greater number of a uh, sorry greater head losses greater head losses depicts the less power generation or uh, maximum revenue lost that's why and more support structure are required so the penstock alignment should have the minimum number of bends and the third fourth point is space for power house the chosen alignment should be such that it is possible to construct a power house at the end of penstock that means if the alignment of penstock is so laid that there is no any sufficient space for the construction of power house then there will be no point in constructing any hydropower project that's why there need to be a sufficient sufficient space for power house construction at the end of penstock so uh, they should be kept uh, they should uh, we should keep in mind there is a sufficient space for the construction of power house just immediately after the end of the penstock pipe the fifth point is stability the laid penstock pipe should be very much stable and regarding other site specific consideration considerations there are roads canal crossings religious places one should always keep in mind keep in mind that there are lot of site specific considerations apart from design considerations that should be kept in mind while laying out any penstock alignment or penstock pipes so that's all for today thank you so much for watching our video